I know this might sound like a typical YouTube clickbait exaggeration, but what you're looking at here is one of the best decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, if not the very best deck. Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Poplove, I am your weirdo geek bro, and today I'm going to show you exactly how to play Zodiac Tri-Brigade, or Tri-Brigade Zodiac, however you want to call it, and this deck is really powerful, it's extremely versatile, but with that power and with that versatility comes a lot of room for mistakes. So we're going to start things off by me taking you through every single card here. And then after that, we're going to go through gameplay examples. Now, even if you are familiar with most of these cards or maybe even all of them, I still recommend watching this part of the video because the way that they're using this deck can be a little bit outside of the box if you're not used to that kind of thinking. All right, so let's get started here and uh, we're going to skip the first card for now. It's related to another card. I don't think you can really reorganize your deck in Master Duel doesn't matter. We're going to start by talking about Tri-Brigade Nerval. This is a really great card and not only because it has like this sick baseball bat or whatever the hell that is, but it has two great effects. One of them is the standard Tri-Brigade monster effect that pretty much every Tri-Brigade in your deck has. And what it means in practice is that you can summon this card, put it on the field, it doesn't matter that it has zero attack, activate its effect, and now you can banish monsters from your graveyard, and depending on how much you banish, you can link summon from your extra deck with the corresponding number. Super handy. And then if they go to the graveyard, they will be able to uh, add one of your Tri-Brigade monsters from your deck to your hand. So that's another really great effect of Nerval. Nerval is super clutch when we're doing our combos. Next up in this deck, we have three Maxis. You probably already know what they do, but just in case you don't know, you play this in your opponent's turn, and anytime they special summon a monster, you can draw one card for that special summon monster. Even if you don't end up drawing a lot from this card, it's good because a lot of players might be, you know, playing a little bit more cautiously under Maxi, so they don't do their full combos, or maybe they even stop altogether. Next up, we got Psy Frame Gear Gamma. This thing, sometimes when I look at card art, I'm like staring at it for 20 minutes and trying to like what's heads what's tails trying to figure out what it is this is one of those but doesn't matter because it's really cool it's basically another hand trap like an ash blossom so running this in your deck is almost like having four ash blossoms instead of three it's really awesome so do you have to activate this when you don't have any monsters in the field you can have back row but if you don't have any monsters you activate this to uh, negate a monster's effect from the opponent and you get to special summon this card Plus, you get the special summon Psy Frame Driver as well, which has 2,500 attack points, so that can get you out of like a troublesome situation potentially. However, note that when you're using Frame Gear Gamma, uh, if you special summon this and the other monster, what you're going to end up doing is banishing those monsters at the end of the turn. They don't get to last in the field, but that's okay because in this deck, we love banished cards anyway, it's not a problem. And the effect that you get from this is so good that it doesn't matter that it's only temporary. Like I said, it's like having four Ash Blossoms in your deck, except you can also affect monster effects. Next up, we have Tri-Braid Karas. And Karas, or Karas, or I don't know. I, I call this dude Karas. Tri-Braid Karas has the same effect that all Tri-Brigades tri have, if you recall from when I was talking about Nerval. Uh, you can, you know, banish from your graveyard to link summon monsters onto the field. Uh, another effect that this card has is that it can special summon itself from your hand. And you're like wondering, what do I need to special summon a two-star monster for? Well, it's really handy because for a lot of our combos, we'll need as many tri-brigades on the field as we can, as we can get. And so by special summoning this bad boy, you get more. Uh, there is one downside, and that is in order to special summon Karas, 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 <laughs> you need to discard a monster from your hand. One thing you might have noticed so far is that all of these cards have Beast, Beast Warrior, and Winged Beast mentioned on them. You don't need to worry about too much because that's basically what our deck is comprised of, those three types. Let's move on to Tri-Brigade Kit, who is a Beast type despite being a person or a child soldier? I don't know. I don't know. But Kit is great because, again, Kit has the same effect that all of the Tri-Brigades have, but also uh, when Kit goes to the graveyard, you can send another monster to the graveyard. And that might seem a little bit weird, but it comes really handy when you're doing Tri-Brigade combos that require you to have things in the graveyard and then eventually banished. After Kit, we've got three Ash Blossoms, so you probably know this card already. 
these are the effects that you can activate, or sorry, these are the effects that you can negate straight from your hand. Ash Blossom is a must have in your deck, just like Max C is. Playing uh, without these six cards in your deck is going to drastically reduce your chances of winning, at least at the higher level play, like the stuff you see in Platinum, or the stuff that you see from Platinum Smurfs that drop down to gold or silver or whatever. Is there a silver? I don't know. Anyway, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Moving on, we got some of the Zodiacs here. So we run three Zodiac monsters in our deck. They all have their own effects, but honestly, we're not too concerned about them. I do recommend you check them out on your own time and read them. But for the purposes of the main things that we're doing in this deck, these Zodiacs, all three of them, Thoroughblade, Ram Ram, and Whiptail, they all exist for us to summon our one of our bosses, which is Zeus. So the way that works is you put down this bad boy or bad girl on the field and what you end up doing is stacking all of your Xyz monsters, which are Zodiacs, on top. And that's because these monsters will let you stack Xyz monsters even with just one monster, so you don't have to actually meet their summoning conditions. So you do that, and then eventually you have four or five, and then you do a thing with Borbo, which uh, I'll explain you know, as we go deeper into this video. And then that lets you summon Zeus, which is one of the best cards in the game. Uh, I'll get to get back to Zeus in a moment here. So that's what the Zodiacs are for. And then also, Thoroughblade has a neat effect where if you have another Zodiac in your hand, what you can do is play Thoroughblade onto the field, and then you can discard your Zodiac in order to draw one more card. This can be super handy if you need something else or if you just need to add to your graveyard. On a semi-related note, can somebody please tell me what the Zodiacs are supposed to be? Are they animal children? Like, what's going on here? I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of this design, personally. What is that? Is that like Thanos' glove, the Infinity Glove? I didn't watch uh, the later anime, so if they show up there and are explained, I have definitely missed it. Either way, not a fan of these designs, not a fan of that design either. Really, anything with like the child cards, nah, son, nah. Anyway, we move on to Tri Brigade Fractal. Uh, Tri Brigade Fractal is probably my favorite Tri Brigade monster from the uh, batch in our deck. Uh, so, this card has all of your typical. Wait, wait a minute. I'm just noticing now. Is this a Centaur? I take that back. Not one of my favorite cards. <laughs> so, Fractal just uh has two blah, 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 blah. fractal has the two effects and uh, one of them is your typical tri brigade effect you know banish from the graveyard into link summon and then the other one is that uh you can use its effect to send a monster to the graveyard from your deck so you're wondering like well, what, that, what does that do that doesn't make that much sense well you activate fractal you send kit to the graveyard you can send nerval to the graveyard you can draw something in your hand and then eventually you combo into a super powerful link summon also, also, I don't have anything against centaurs. It's all just, uh, it's all jokes. Don't, don't come at me. Nibiru, the primal being is up next. Nibiru is a do or die kind of card, like ride or die, fast and furious, because if you play this at the right time, it can help you either win the duel or turn the tide of the duel. If you play it at the wrong time, oh, you're done, you're done. So basically, if your opponent special summons five or more monsters, you activate Nibiru from your hand. You put Nibiru on the field, probably in attack mode, 3,000. And then on your opponent's field, you put down a token uh, from Nibiru's uh, parts or whatever. It's called Primal Being Token. And this token takes uh, the attack and defense of all of the things that you destroyed on the field and puts them together. So you want to time this at the end of a combo, basically, because if your opponent has like two Link monsters on the field and one like regular or effect monster, those Link monsters aren't going to have any defense points, and the one other monster is probably not going to have 3,000. So you pop their field with Nibiru, and then you put Nibiru on the field, you put their token in defense mode, and then you destroy the token on the next turn, whether it's with Nibiru or with some other effect. Next up, we've got a classic Harpy's Feather Duster. This is just good for clearing the back row of your opponent, plus it makes Eldritch players really, really upset. <laughs> uh, it really negates most of the capabilities of their deck, which is super handy. And another card in our deck does that, and we'll get to that in a moment. We have Pot of Desires here, and with this you can banish 10 cards from your deck and draw two cards. 10 cards is a lot, but again, it helps us out because our deck is all about banishing stuff for our super big combo that summons our boss monsters. 
After the pot of D, you got Lightning Storm, which is another typical staple. You can destroy attack position monsters on your opponent's side of the field, or you can destroy their spells and traps. Just keep in mind, you cannot have any face-up cards on the field in order to activate Lightning Storm. Super handy for clearing the board. Now, we got Fire Formation Tenki, which is uh, one of the secret MVPs of this deck. It just basically lets you add a Tri-Brigade monster to yourself or a Zodiac monster, so it gives you amazing flexibility for the kind of combo that you want to go for uh plus it has the small bonus of beast warrior monsters you control gain 100 attack it's it's nice it's nice next up one of the not so secret mvps of this of this deck is called by the grave limited to two because it's so good so you target one uh monster in the opponent's graveyard banish it if you do and negate its effects and then um on the next turn other monsters with that same name cannot be used so Let's talk about that first. I mean, they can be used, they just, you know, they won't work. So let's say you use this card and uh, you, you know, banished Eldritch from your opponent, but you yourself are then playing Eldritch. You can't really do Eldritch because its effects are negated. Or if you do Ash Blossom, if you can banish Ash Blossom with this, it's not gonna work. So be careful when you use it, but it's an amazing, amazing card. Next up, we got Infinite Impermanence. Super handy card because it lets you target one face-up monster and negate its effects just for the for the turn. And if you have set this card down, like how you normally, you know, you set down a trap card next turn you play it, or a turn later, uh, that means then that other spell trap card effects in its vertical column are unaffected. So if there is a, or not affected, cannot be activated, sorry. Let me say that again. <laughs> when you use this card, right, if it was set on the previous turn, uh, basically, any card opposite of it that is a spell and a trap cannot use its effect. You can also play this from your hand if you have no other cards in your hand. So that's handy. And now, one of our Giga Chad cards, Try Brigade Revolt, and it's not even like a UR or anything. This thing lets you sum special summon uh, basically the makeup of your deck. So Beast, Beast Warrior, Wing Beast Monsters. You get to special summon them from your graveyard or your banish zone or both and their effects are negated, but bring them out on the field, you then immediately link summon uh, from your deck. So you can special, or you can link summon one of your boss monsters and go crazy with it. This card is amazing because it actually sets up uh, OTKs. And even if you can't set up an OTK with it, you will set up into just having a boss monster on the field and many more options to play with. Now let's move on to the extra deck. You can check these, uh, Zodiac Xyz cards out on your own. They all have their own effect, but for the most part, you don't really use most of them. Like I said before, they exist in order for us to be able to get to Zeus. But in order to be able to get to Zeus, you have to remember that this card, Zodiac Borbo, is that like a child archer that's a pig or a boar? Is that hooked? What, what's, what's going on here? What's going on here, Yu-Gi-Oh? What's going on here? Another infinity gauntlet. Anyway, this thing attacks life points directly which is really important for a combo that I'm going to show you later. Then we got Zeus, one of the goats. So with Zeus, you can detach two materials from the card and you'll probably have four or five when you're summoning it. Uh, you can send all other cards from the field to the graveyard. The keyword here is send. It doesn't target anything, right? It basically wipes the board. So a lot of times your opponent might have cards that say like cannot be targeted by card effects and stuff like that. Zeus gets past all of that. Zeus is incredible, destroys the entire field, very, very difficult to stop it. Of course, you can still attack it, you know, but it's got 3,000 defense, 3,000 attack, all around incredible card. If you have any Xyz monsters that uh, can benefit from this card, you want this card in your deck, uh, no matter basically what archetype you run. There's also another effect to Zeus, and that's uh, once per turn, if another card you destroy is bad, or another card you control is destroyed by battle or opponent's card effect, you can attach one card from your hand to Zeus as a material. You're not really going to get to use that, but it's good to know. Usually you get to use Zeus once, maybe twice, but it's very, very rare, like extremely rare that you run out of materials for Zeus to begin with, because either the match ends, or maybe Zeus gets destroyed, and uh... It's just nice to know that the effect is there, but yeah, it's not going to change your life. So moving on, we probably have um, the least important you are in this whole deck, Sal Salman Great Almirage. 
And what you need to know about Salman Great, it's it's easy to get him on the field uh, because it's just the one Link summon. And then uh, when a normal monster you control is destroyed by battle, while this is in the graveyard, it will summon itself back so that, you know, it's handy in case you need to have another monster to add to a Link summon. And then you can also tribute this card to target one other monster you control. It uh, cannot be destroyed by card effects, which is really, really handy. But again, if you can't build Salaman Great uh, right off the bat, your deck's not going to suffer too much for it. There are combos with it, but it's not a huge deal. Another card that's not a huge deal, but is still really good to have, is Ancient Warrior's Oath. So basically, you get this card out on the field, and you can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard, and then the... Uh, the effect is that you negate, sorry, you don't negate, you send one of your opponent's cards back to their hand. Again, I don't use this card super often, but depending on how you like to play your combos, you might find more use for it than I do. But we move on, and uh, we got Tri Brigade Farajit the Baron Blossom, Tri Brigade Vegeta, as I like to call her. Another child soldier? Uh. Anyway, once you have this on the field, you can special summon a, another Tri Brigade basically from your hand to the field, which is super handy, leads to more combos. There's also a graveyard effect that you don't use often. Uh, you can draw one card when this is in the graveyard, and then you have to place one other card or that card from your hand on the bottom of your deck. Barajit is basically just combo material for the most part, and uh, usually ends up leading to uh, this card. Tri Brigade Bear Bum, or Bear Brum, the rampant, rampant. Tri Brigade Bear Bum, that's what we're gonna call it. And it's a little girl inside a bear mech. Hmm. Anyway, you don't usually use the uh, main effect of this card, or the first effect, which is that you can discard two cards, then target one of your banished monsters, special summon it. Discarding two cards is a pretty big price, but when this card goes to the graveyard, similar to Vegeta, you can search for a card. So what, what this does is that you can pull a uh, Tri Brigade Revolt from your deck, which is that trap card that basically summons all of your banished and graveyard monsters. So you can pull that from your deck directly once this is in the graveyard. So usually we combo with this card so that it can get set to the graveyard so that we can pull Tri Brigade Revolt. However, keep in mind that you need one other card in your hand to put back into the deck when you use this effect. If you use this effect when you have no cards, you're just going to put Tri Brigade Revolt back into the deck, and then you'll be sad. Next up, we have my type of card. We've got a, a rare, first of all. Uh, a bird that you can't pronounce the name of. <laughs> a mecha bird or, or something, I don't know. Krasvelger. 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 Yeah, House Burglar. That's what we're going to call the Desperate Doom Eagle. Uh, usually just used as a combo piece for... Uh, one of our boss monsters, but still a handy card, so gains 2400 attack when your opponent has no monsters in the graveyard, which is, you know, very rare for that to happen, but it's cool. And then you can target one monster in your opponent's graveyard and shuffle it into the deck. This effect rules because if there's a pesky graveyard monster that's either coming back or is going to come back or just somehow has effects that are troublesome, you can kind of get rid of it by putting it back in your opponent's deck. And, uh, yeah, apart from that, like I said, used as combo material, but we'll get to that in a second. First off, we're going to look at Rugal, the uh, Silver Sheller here. Handy enough card, you can basically extend your combos with it, but also when you use its effect, you bring out one of your tribe brigades uh, from your deck into the field, but it disappears from the field at the end of the turn. It goes back in your hand, so it's just basically a prolonged way of you drawing another card from the deck that you want to draw. Also, when this is in the graveyard, uh, you can reduce your opponent's uh, attack uh, by 300 points for every monster type that you control. Uh, it's a temporary effect, obviously, but it can come in handy when it's time to fight. So after Rugal, we've got Apollo USA, or Appaloosa, Appaloosia, Apollo Creed. I'm going to say this is Apollo Creed, Bow, or Bow of the Goddess. And uh, this card is really great. You want to use three cards to create this, to link summon this. Uh, because then it'll get 2400 attack points and every time your opponent uh, uses a monster effect you can negate it by spending 800 attack points of this card so you put this on the field it can negate three monster effects amazing 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 
All right, so we have two more cards in this deck to go through. I feel like I've been talking for 85 years and we're not even halfway done for the video. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There's just so much knowledge about this deck to share. So we got Access Code Talker here. Basically, depending on how it's summoned, you can get it to have over 5,000 attack and you can banish one Link Monster from your field or graveyard to destroy one card your opponent controls. Access Code Talker is phenomenal. You can OTK with this card and another card in the field. The only problem is that you probably won't even get a chance to finish your OTK because the other person quits. At least that, what, that, blah, blah, blah. at least that is what is always happening to me. Aha, uh -huh, humble brag or just regular brag. I, I don't even know. The final card that we're looking at here is another one of our boss monsters, Tri Brigade Shireg, the Ominous Omen. This thing is radical because it lets you destroy an opponent's card after you special summon it. This effect is technically triggered by Beast, Beast Warrior, or Wing Beast Monsters being special summoned on the field, but it is triggered by itself. <laughs> so that's super cool. You actually get to banish uh, the opposition's card. And you can also, once this card goes to the graveyard, you can use it to search for another card to add to your hand, which is super handy because you know how it is. You summon all these 3,000 monsters and stuff like that, but this ain't your blue eyes Yu-Gi-Oh. These cards come and go really quickly. It's, you know, surprising if they last more than two turns. But anyway, you've heard me talk enough about the cards, so let's jump right into the gameplay scenarios. Okay, so in this first match here, I want to show you a really good opener that you can do with basically just a couple of cards to start with. This opener you don't always get to finish it, but even if you don't get to finish it the way you want to, it still puts you in a good position. And generally speaking, you want to be going first with Tri Brigade if you can help it. If not, you still have a bunch of options, but this deck definitely is at its best when it goes first. So uh, my mouse keeps freezing in a lot of these gameplay videos, so you might see it like jitter across the screen or going to weird spots, and I do apologize. But basically what we're going to do here is Tried Brigade Fractal. We're activating its effect and we're sending Kit to the graveyard. So what Kit is going to allow us to do once it goes into the graveyard is to send another card to the graveyard and we're sending Nerval to the graveyard. The reason why we're doing uh, multiple cards in the graveyard is because we want more stuff in the graveyard to act as basically materials for summoning later on. So right now we got Nerval here, we're activating its effect, and this is going to let us uh, bring another Tri Brigade monster into our hand. So we're going to do a uh, Tri Brigade Caress, <laughs> and now we're going to start off like our summoning combo. So as you can see there, Tri Brigade Caress is lighting up, but we're not using its effect, we're just going to put it onto the field regularly. So we got the summon here, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Actually, yeah, I am going to skip ahead. Okay. So skipping ahead, uh, I activated its effect after it was on the field, and now I am uh, throwing away basically two cards from uh, the graveyard to the Banish Zone, the Shadow Realm. And what this is going to let me do is Link Summon, a card that is uh, basically met by the conditions of those two cards. And the card that I'm going to bring forth is uh, Ferigit Vegeta, Tri Brigade Vegeta. And the reason why we're doing this is because we want to use Vegeta's ability to bring forth another Tri Brigade monster onto the field. So we're going to bring forth Tri Brigade Nerval. Nerval, Garfield's cousin, or whatever the hell it is. <laughs> In the meantime, we're going to special summon. We're going to link uh, our Vegeta and our Caress into another monster here. And the one that we're going to be doing is Rugal. And let's uh, just skip ahead. We don't need to watch all of that. Now we have the option to activate uh, Tri Brigade Vegeta's effect. Normally, I don't activate it. But I check my hand and I'm thinking like, ah, you know, I'm not feeling this Nibiru right now at the start of the game. Let's, you know, gamble a little bit. Let's see if we can return it to the deck and get something else. And it really does work out for us in this case because we get Pot of Desires, but it's a little bit of a gamble. Normally you would want to keep your, uh, uh, what do you call it, Nibiru in your hand just in case things go south. But in this case, I want it to be a little bit more aggressive. So, now I'm going to activate the effect of Nerval, which is basically the same effect as Caress. And you can see here I'm choosing to banish two more cards because this is going to let me Link Summon another monster. And we can just fast forward through this. And we're summoning Bear Bum onto the field. And now we're going to take Bear Bum and we're going to take Nerval to create another monster. Uh, and we're also going to take Rugal as part of that uh, because we are going to make Appaloosa, Appaloosia, Apollo Creed, Apollo USA. And uh, we're going to be able to get Tri Brigade Revolt back into our hand, or 
for the first time in our hand uh, by the graveyard effect of bare bums. So we can just skip ahead a little bit here. You can see that there, but just to uh, show it in action. So we get asked if we want to activate this effect and skip max C. We get Tri Brigade Revolt into our hand. We do need to return one card back into the deck because of the uh, bare bums effect. And you can see also uh, Apollo USA, Apollo Creed, Appalachia, 2400 attack because we used several monsters uh, as part of that link in order to bring up its attack because it can negate effects based on its attack, right? You reduce it by 800 uh, every single time that you want to negate a monster effect. So we set down our card and we end our turn and this is a really good opening play. Let's uh, fast forward a little bit. So we don't really need to watch our opponent too much. It's a blue eyes deck, so we're not too concerned about it. Uh, basically, I've just been, uh, I haven't even had to use uh, Apollo Creed yet. And uh, they're gonna destroy it, which is totally fine. Not an issue. We're gonna enter the main phase here. And now I'm going to, uh, in the end phase, I'm going to activate my Tri Brigade Revolt. And what's that? what that is going to do, I don't know why I can't speak today, sorry. What that is going to do is bring forth a bunch of our graveyard and banished monsters. As you can see here, I am looking at Kit, I'm looking at Nerval because they're banished and I can bring them back. So if they come back onto the field and then go back to the graveyard after they're used as summoning material, it's great because I can reuse their effects again. So that's super handy. So putting them all down on the field, we don't need to watch all of this and all of this creates our boss monster. Uh, Ominous Omen, Shreig, Shreig, not sure how to say it, our Eagle Boy or whatever bird that is. And from here on, it's pretty much smooth sailing. <laughs> we activate its effect, which allows us to banish one card. We're going to banish uh, this Blue Eyes Alt Dragon. And then I'm just going to fast forward here a little bit. This duel's about to finish anyway, uh, because there's just not much that a Blue Eyes deck can really do. Oh, sorry, I banished the trap card. I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention. I banished the trap card uh, just to play it extra safe. And this was all done on their turn, right? This is turn two end. And they just give up. It doesn't even go back to my turn because what are you really gonna do as a blue ice player anyway? So anyway, let's move on to the next duel. So in this duel, I wanna show you an OTK combo, how it might look like. Now the problem with the OTKs with this deck, at least in platinum matches, the opponent knows that they're coming so they just end up surrendering and you don't end up getting good footage of it to show you in the tutorial. I guess first world problems, right? <laughs> uh, suffering suffering from my own success or suffering from the meta-ness of this deck. But anyway, uh, the reason this monster is on my field, it's not something I run in the deck. It's a kaiju, so it destroyed one of my monsters and basically replaced it. Uh, but that's okay, it's not a big deal. We draw a lightning storm here and uh, we're gonna activate Fractal's effect and we're gonna send Nerval to the graveyard. It's kind of our bread and butter play. Um, so we're just doing that now. I'm gonna fast forward here a little bit, you know, Nerval, uh, we're gonna activate Nerval, and then we bring Cress into the fray here. So next up, what we're gonna do here is, oh, sorry. <laughs> let me, let me, let me show you, let me show you. We're gonna summon Cress, and then we're gonna use its effect. And from there, we are going to bring uh, our boss monster, Ominous Omen, onto the field by uh, banishing four cards. Nope, I lied. I, I misremembered this replay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we banish two cards and we bring uh, Farajit onto the field. And then Vegeta here is going to bring forth Kit onto the field. So let's do that again. Now we can also activate Kit's effect, which is great. Same effect as Caress, same effect as all the Tri Brigades. And this will allow us to get more stuff onto the board. Uh, we use it. We, what do we end up doing here? Do we do four? We do four, we do four, right? We do four, yeah, we do four. And then this brings forth Ominous Omen onto the field. Omen destroys this card, uh, their, their Vegeta. This was kind of a mirror matchup. They had a bit of a different deck than we did. And then uh, what do we got next? We got Access Code Talker. So we're gonna bring Access Code Talker onto the field. We have so much attack power now. Victory, they quit. I don't really get to complete the whole combo, but basically Access Code Talker uh, after it's summoned, um, you can bump up its, uh, what do you call it, attack points to over 5,000. So we have over 5,000 there, you still have Shrig, and we even have this extra Kaiju card. That's what an OTK combo could look like. Uh, in practice, if you know, you're on your way to summoning Access Code Talker while you still have Shrig on the field, your opponent is probably just going to quit. 
Our next match is against an Eldritch player, and I know a lot of you hate, hate, hate going up against Eldritch decks, but that's one of the reasons why Tri Brigades are so good. They can blow by Eldritch, and it's kind of a simple matchup for them, really. So, at this point, let's just fast forward. We don't need to watch their turn. They're going to put down multiple trap cards, as you can see, 5 trillion of them. Not ideal, but not something we need to worry about. Our hand is maybe a little bit odd, but we can definitely make it work. We've got a lot of drop power here. We've even got stuff like Called by the Grave. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to play, um, we're going to play Fractal. I did think about playing Tenki, but we're going to play Fractal's effect and my mouse keeps freezing. <laughs> so again, another player that probably hates me, but what can you do? So we use Fractal's effect. We send Kit to the graveyard. Then we send Nerval to the graveyard. Then we activate Nerval effect. That lets us bring back a monster uh, or give us a monster from the deck. And we have Karas here. So what we're going to do next is just lay down uh, you know, a trap card and then put down Tenki. And so Tenki is going to let us bring a monster into our hand. Uh, I was thinking of going for Zeus at this point so that I could wipe the whole field. And, uh, you know, we got Zeus over here playing him, but he flips over a uh, Conquistador of the Golden Land and then the Scarlet Sanguine, which allows him to summon Elblich and then allows him to follow up with the Conquistador, which then results in uh, my opponent targeting my Zodiac, destroying it. Uh, but it's great because with this little kind of move here, I was able to waste two of their trap cards. Well, maybe not waste, but at least I got them used up so I don't have to worry about them. So yeah, this uh, attacks, or attacks, it affects my Zodiac and it's bye-bye, but that's okay. We still got a pretty good hand, so we're gonna, you know, put down our Called by the Grave, activate the Pot of Desire, two Tri Brigade Revolts. I'm not sure that we really need two here in our hand, but eh, it's fine. And then we got Harpy's Feather Duster, which makes Eldritch players cry, as everybody knows. So, what are we going to do next here? Well, we're going to fast forward first. <laughs> and then we're going to let the uh, player go on their turn. And normally, I would activate Tri Brigade Revolt in the end phase of the opponent's turn. But as you're about to see here, I activate it right away for Eldritch. And the reason why I activate it right away is because I want to be able to mess up this Eldritch's field, mess up their day, banish their Eldritch, and really ruin the whole thing in their deck. So, I activate it. We don't need to watch all of these animations. I bring back four monsters onto the field. I'll link summon into... Well, maybe we'll watch this animation. But we link summon into Treg the Ominous Omen. This lets us banish one card from the field. We're going to banish Eldritch, of course. And once Eldritch is in the Banish Zone, or just banished into the Shadow Realm, there's nothing they can do for that Eldritch. Eldritch decks are not designed to recycle cards for the most part. So... Already, this is like looking like we're in a really good spot. We also get to activate a graveyard effect from uh, Nerval here because, uh, remember, he was in the graveyard originally or banished, we brought him back, then he went back, and then we're gonna activate Kit as well to get another monster in the graveyard. So let me just fast forward here. We don't need to watch it. But ultimately, when we end up with one more monster in our hand. And um, this was all done on the opponent's turn, so it's just the start of their main phase. We'll fast forward here. We don't need to watch the whole turn. They got a pot. They're going to draw some cards, do some business, yada, yada, yada. We don't care too much. Um, but now what they're going to try to do is... So they activated... You know what? Let me, let me pull it back. I, I went forward too far. I'm sorry. They they got Eldritch in their hand. And they're doing the effect now where uh, Eldritch is going to destroy something on the field, but also special summon itself after, basically. But that's where Called by the Grave is so good. That's GG for the second Eldritch in this person's deck. A lot of decks run only two Eldritches, some run three like mine, uh, but in a lot of cases this is GG for the Eldritch player. They've got uh, the White Destiny Elixir and uh, I totally don't remember what this card does. Okay, so it was able to go past by Called by the Grave, so it wasn't a GG, <laughs> um, but that's okay. We're not, you know, we're not too worried by that because we have a bazillion more plays that we can do. So. Let's just fast forward here, fast forward. We don't need to watch all this stuff. It's the battle phase, you know, what are they gonna do? Nothing that they can really do here unless they wanna send one of their traps to the graveyard. And if I remember right, they do attack. Yeah, they do attack with uh, Huaquero here. Um, I guess just to get more traps in the back row, but again, not really concerned by that. So next up we got uh, we got a bunch of uh, tri-brigades in our hand, so we have Shrig on the field. We still have uh, Feather Duster, 
And we can set down another Tri Brigade Revolt, so it's good eaten. We're gonna eat really well. But first, opponent uses the Golden Land Conquistador. Uh, is gonna destroy one of our cards. Pretty sure they destroy Shrig. Yep, there they go. That's okay, not a problem. We're gonna play Harpy's Feather Duster, clean that up. They're gonna use uh, Sanguine to get their final Eldritch onto the field. It's not an issue. Not, not an issue, bro. Do you even lift? Uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna summon, what do you call it? Um, why am I blanking on his name? Fractal, Fractal, that's what it was. And then I'm gonna use Fractal's effect and we're gonna take four cards from our graveyard, uh, banish them, and this will result in our boss monster coming back, you know, Shrig, and um, we can banish one of the Eldritches now. <laughs> oh, it's too easy. People who complain about Eldritch decks don't know how easy it is to counter them, but you can watch my guide about them if you really wanna play a good Eldritch deck, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how to self-promote. <laughs> anyway, so we destroyed that one and now we're using more monster effects. Um, I'm special summoning Crass onto the field by uh, discarding one card. And then once again, I'm using that Tri Brigade effect to get another Link monster onto the field. At this point, what we're doing is overkill, but um, I just wanted to illustrate <laughs> how powerful this deck really is. So we're gonna bring up uh, the Doom Eagle onto the field, Kras la la la, and then while I'm trying to figure out here, do I want Apollo USA, Appalusia, do I want Axis Kotaker? My opponent's probably like cursing me to oblivion. But uh, yeah, they, then they end, just end up quitting anyway before I can make the summon. <laughs> but that's how you deal with an Eldritch deck uh, in style, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if that was stylish. Let's move on. For this next duel, I'm going to show you how to summon Zeus and how to make a mistake with Zeus right away. I'm just pulling it back here a little bit. So we're starting like partially through the duel here. We're playing against the, uh, what do you call it? I'm blanking on the archetype that uses the Herald cards. Was it Drytrons or somebody else? I think it was Drytrons, but I'm blanking on it. Anyway, we did our typical combo, which by now you've seen a million times. Fractal into Kit into... Um, what should I call it? Nerval into getting a card back into our hand. And uh, what I'm actually going to do here, though, is a little bit different. So I'm not going to be playing my Tri Brigades. I'm going to play the Zodiac here because I'm thinking, like, there's just this thing on the field. There's one card in the hand. Let's go aggressive. Let's see if we can, like, punish that lack of cards or whatever. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm playing these games at like 3 a.m. I'm recording this at like 4 a.m. I, I don't know what's going on anymore. So anyway, we are immediately uh, Xe summoning into Zodiac Borbo with just one card because that's, you know, the effect of this card and all of the Zodiacs in our extra deck. So I'm going to the battle phase here on purpose. I can attack the life points directly. That's one of the things that this card can do. Then I'm going into the second main phase. Now, Here's where things get ridiculous and kind of awesome. I'm now just going to be uh, Xe summoning the remaining Zodiacs one by one. And because my Zodiac did battle this turn and survive to begin with, that is the summoning condition for Zeus. But the reason why I'm stacking all of these together is because I want maximum materials on Zeus so I can use Zeus's effect multiple times if I really need to. Let's fast forward here to get to the Zeus animation. Yeah, perfect timing. And, uh, whoa, what's this? What's this? This is the biggest Zeus misplay right here. <laughs> it's the second, it's main phase two, and I put Zeus in attack mode. Why would I do that? Well, I was just so excited to get Zeus onto the field that I put him in attack mode, I didn't mean to. The reason why you don't wanna put him in attack mode, you will see in just a moment. But anyway, Zeus allows me to clear the field at least, so that's that's nice. And I'm just kicking myself right now. I'm so mad at myself. Opponent has two cards, and guess which card they drew or already had in their hand. If you guessed Lightning Storm, or whatever the heck it's called, you guessed correctly. There it is. And all of that hard work we did for Zeus was for nothing. <laughs> so put your Zeus in defense mode, folks, when you get it out in main phase two. Uh, I'm just like reading the Zeus card effect trying to see if there's anything I can do to keep my Zeus. I cannot. Um, we end up winning this duel anyway though. Uh, I'm just gonna fast forward through it just to see if there's anything of note. But the, the thing that I want to illustrate with this is that it's really easy to mess up Zeus and completely screw yourself. But also, as long as you have enough cards in your deck and uh, in your banish or graveyard, 
you can still come back with tri brigades they have so much versatility so as you can see here i'm special summoning and then as soon as i get my boss monster out onto the field using the combos we've already seen in other videos my opponent just quits because they know they know i'm going to show you two more clips that are sort of just like this deck flexing on other decks but it's important to see it in action to know how it all works so we're just bringing ominous omen onto the field right now because we use tri brigade revolt on the opponent's turn and as you can see, we have Apollo Creed or Appaloosa on the field and the opponent uh, wipes our back row out, but it doesn't really matter. We already activated our trap. I don't know if they know what they're doing. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit here. And uh, basically what ends up happening is I try to activate Max C. They activate this card. Uh, if the activation of this card is blah, 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 this card, this card, blah, 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 blah. It, it's fine. Reading doesn't, reading doesn't solve the world's problems. Dueling does. So anyway, they're going to play this monster here to start off their combo and we're just going to Apollo Creed it. We're going to negate its uh, effect. And that's pretty much it for the duel. Like at this point, they don't have anything left. Uh, they're going to try to activate another effect, which is from the graveyard. But Apollo USA works on that as well. So yeah, it, it really is that simple sometimes. Not always, you know, you're not going to have like a stupid easy duel every duel it's gonna happen once in a while but that's why apollo creed here is really great and uh this person i think they just end up quitting after they realize what's happened yeah they do we get the uh, easy w here anyway let's take a look at the last clip that i want to show you here we have an eldritch player that's going to try to be overly aggressive overplay overextend and we're just going to punish that really easily with our deck and this duel i think was two minutes maybe less uh anyway let's skip forward a bit so they get elich onto the field and they did so with elich's effect so cannot be destroyed by card effects all that good stuff get some traps on the field and we have only monsters in our hand so it's like a little bit like hmm i wonder what we're gonna do about that but we're just gonna use lightning storm here and we're gonna destroy the back row as much as we can and carry on from there because at that point it'll just be Hashtag too easy. They're gonna get another Eldritch on the field, but we have Ash Blossom in our hand. And that's why you run three Ash Blossom for situations like this. Then they're gonna use uh, Vanity's Emptiness. Uh, if a card is sent from the deck or the field to your graveyard, destroy this card. Forgot about Vanity's Emptiness, um, but it's all good. We're not too concerned about it. It doesn't really matter because it's getting destroyed. So at this point, we're just gonna bring forth a Zeus. And you've already seen how to summon Zeus from earlier in the video, so I don't need to show you, but basically, like, we win because the opponent knows what we're going to be doing here, plus they're pretty empty. Eldritches, they know they can't really do anything when they don't have any cards to work with. So that's it for the gameplay videos. Let's talk about alternative options in the deck if you can't get every single UR. As amazing as Tri Brigade is, unfortunately, the Zodiac Tri Brigade deck is very expensive to craft, so I've added some cards here that we'll take a look at in just a moment but if you need to save uh well if you need to save gems or you don't have enough or you don't have enough crafting points immediately right off the bat you can ignore crafting dryden't you can ignore crafting salman great you can ignore ancient warriors oath you can it, this is a risky one but you can ignore shrig the ominous omen uh one of them uh you should really really run two if you can but if you can only run one i mean your deck will still be okay but the chances of it winning will drastically go down. You can also ignore Access Code Talker for now because Access Code Talker, it's a hard card to summon. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of thinking, a lot of, you know, situational, what's the word I'm looking for? The right situation, let's say. So you can ignore it for now. Uh, right off the bat, you're saving yourself uh, the hassle of a few URs there. Now moving on to the main deck, the things you can get rid of, I mean, I don't recommend getting rid of them, like I said, but if you have to, take out the Nibirus and take out Harpy's Feather Duster and uh, take out the Infinite Impermanences. Whoa, what did I just take out as well? Oh, I took out one of these. Okay, that's fine. So what you really want to replace those cards with are things that can destroy the field in some way or negate effects. So you get a free Raigeki from solo play, do that, add it to the deck. You can add three Forbidden Chalices, uh, which uh, negates effects temporarily for your opponents at the cost of giving them more attack. 
You can also try a Book of Moon if you really want. Um, while it won't negate effects, it will turn cards upside down, which as a result might cause an effect to not be activated uh, if, you know, it has to be on the field first. Uh, and then you can also add Torrential Tributes instead of, uh, you know, like the Infinite Impermanences or the other cards that we had. So I think if you were looking to make some cuts to this deck, what it would look like if I were to build it, it's uh, basically like this. So. Uh, the main deck is good to go here. Uh, actually, no, it's not because we have 42 cards instead of 41, so we're just gonna do that. Or you can, you know, do Torrential Tribute instead and have it be 40, but this deck has so much drawing power that 41 is not really a big deal. Don't go into the 42 territory though, so... Okay, let's say this is what our deck looks like right now. Then we're going to get rid of Dryadent, we're going to get rid of uh, Sawman Great, Ancient Ones, access code talker and then if we really have to we'll get rid of one of the omens and this is what we're now down to so you should still be able to do most of the core functions of this deck it just won't be optimized well folks thank you so much for watching this 30 million long year video if you enjoy this content let me know in the comments show it to your friends you know don't be stingy with the tips don't be stingy with the guides <laughs> you can also follow me on twitter if you want i am at dr poplov on there uh, obviously you can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh content thanks so much for watching i don't know how to close videos cut the footage cut the footage